Okay, now moving on to our task number two with MPLS MRU. So now we need to reduce an MTU on router three, serial 000 to 1490. Okay, so let me go back to our diagram here, kind of delete all this. So right here, router three, we're going to make MTU 1490. Okay, so remember we still have our link between R2 and R5 shut down, so the traffic should still be forced this way. All right, once we reduce the MTU, then we're going to troubleshoot MTU issue from R6 lead back 10 to R7 lead back 10. Okay, so hopping over to R3, interface 0, 0, 0, 0, which is facing R4. We're going to do MTU 1490. Okay, and now that we have that modified, we can do show MPLS forwarding of the destination FEC for us, and that is zero, zero. Detail, you can see that the MRU before it was uh, 1500, now it's become a 1490, so it low, lower according to the actual MTU. Okay, and, then, and just in case you guys don't know what MRU is, or MRU is the maximum receive unit, which means it's the largest label packet that a router can receive for that FEC without fragmenting it before sending it out to the next hop. In this case, R3 cannot receive a packet including the MPS label any bigger than 1490, otherwise it should start fragmenting that packet. Okay, we can also do a show MPLS forwarding to R2 loopback zero. You can see that for that particular FEC, the MRU is also lowered to 1490. So by default, the MRU is equal to the interface MTU of the outgoing interface. Right. So now going back to R6, so you're trying to do a ping 7701 sourcing from loopback 10, and let's make a packet size of 1495, and that's larger than 1490. You can see that the ping goes through just fine, but if you force those pings to have a non-fragment bit set, you can see that the packet is actually not getting through because when it get through, the, the packet got fragmented, but now you're forcing it not to be fragmented, it gets dropped. And this is because the packet size 1495 is definitely larger than our MRU that we set on R3. Okay, our MRU is only 1490. Okay, so now let's assume that we kind of know that there's a fragmentation happening somewhere in our network. We just need to identify when that's happening. So what you can do is, in our case here, on R1, we can do a ping MPLS IPv4 and to the destination of 7700. Since it's the FEC, it has to be slash 24. And then we have an option to do a sweep here so we can send out variable packet size increasing from or starting from, let's say we just pick a 1485. I mean, obviously we can start with the even lower number but without having to wait for all those packets to time out. We know that our issue is 1490, but let's start with something 1485, just to show you what it looks like. And then with the maximum, Pack it up to 1500 with a sweep interval of one second. Okay, and then you can also modify, pretty much have the same options as the regular ping or MPLS ping. Okay, so I'm going to let that run until it completes. All right, looks like it's circling back, so let me kill that. Okay, so what's happening here is the first two packet is coming back as B and B, and that's good because that means it mates all the way to the egress router. And so as we saw earlier, B means unlabeled output interface. So the first two packet came back with that, and that has the packet size of 1485 and 1486. And then after that, we get a timeout with a, since we have the ICMP debug running, we get the output of fragmentation needed, but since we have the DF bit set, the router is not able to fragment the packet. And this is for any packets that's larger than 1486. So that would be 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. 
96. And then once it hits 97, we got a Q. Q means request not sent. Okay, and that's because at 1497, including the MPLS label that's going to get put on, which is four bytes, that's going to make the packet exceed the local MRU. Okay, so if you do show I, uh, MPLS forwarding for 7700 detail, you can see that local MRU for R1 for the FEC is only 1500. Okay, once the packet gets any bigger than 1500, the router just it doesn't even bother sending it. That's why it came back with Q. Okay, now going back and explain the reason why we got two Bs for the first two packets, which is 85 and 86. So it seems that 1486 is the bigger packets that we can send through this FEC. And that's because that we have on R3 and MRU set to 1490. Okay, so like I mentioned, 1490, that includes the MPLS label already, which is four bytes. So 1490 minus four, that gives you 14. 86. And that's why we were able to do a ping of the packet size up to 1486. Okay, 1485 and then 1486. Okay, so what all of these tells us is we're able to send the packet up to 1486. So we know that somewhere we have a router that has MRU set to 1490. Since we know that we're only dealing with a single MPLS label, so it's just plus four, so that's 1490. And since we are receiving a dot fragment or a fragment needed coming back from R3, most likely R3 is the culprit in this issue. Okay, we can also do something similar to our, or with our trace, MPLS, IPv4, let's do 7700 slash 24, and just make sure it doesn't keep going forever. Let's do TTL5 for the maximum. Okay, so this is actually give you, gives you a little bit more information. So it tells you right away that on R1, the MRU is 1500, but on R3, the MRU is actually 1490. Okay, so this is kind of a lot more informational since the reply packets already include the MRU as part of that. Okay, it tells you the label as well. And our trace routes actually made it past R3 to R4 and then stops at R2. Okay, so now we know where the problem is. The problem is on R3 that has the MRU of 1490. So let's take a look at our next task right here, which is we need to configure R3 to allow MPLS packet up to 1496 bytes to be switched without modifying the interface MTU. And that's without the fragmentation. Okay, so what this value right here implies is we need to have the MRU set to 1500 since we're dealing with again a single MPLS label. So to have a packet size up to 1496, that means we need an MRU of 1500. So now on R3, we know that we have the MRU currently set to 1490, so we need to increase that value without touching the actual interface MTU. Okay, and we are able to do that by getting under the serial interface 000. Okay, right here. And what we're going to do, there's a command for a MPLS MTU. So that MTU will only be or will only affect the MPLS label traffic. And you can see by default, you can adjust the MPLS MTU or MRU not to exceed the interface actual MTU, which is 1490 at this point. But if you want to exceed that, you need to overwrite the maximum MTU on the interface, which is described right here. Okay, and after that, then you have the option to increase all the way to 1580 on this router. And we said all we need to do is to increase that up to 1500. Okay, so just from that one interface, let's do another show MPLS forwarding on that FEC. And you can see now our MRU has been increased to 1500. Now, just to prove that that is now taking effect, let's go back to R1 and do another ping. MPLS sweep starting from 1485 to 1500. All right, you can see it went pretty quickly. That's because the packet has made all the way through. So let's count the B. So again, starting at 1485, so that would be 85, 86, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that would be 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. 
So now we're able to send the packet up to the size of 1496 before it obviously exceeds the local MRU and then the router is back to where it doesn't even send out packets. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the trace route MPLS TTL5. We are now getting a output or reply with the MRU of 1500 on the router R3. So we are good with that as well. And that's complete our final task number two. All right, so in this video, you've learned and see how the MPLS pings and trace routes are different from the traditional ICMP ping and trace route and how you can use that to troubleshoot issues like the packets become unlabeled in your MPLS cloud or the issues with the MRU on your MPLS routers that may lead to packet fragmentations. And that wraps up our video on MPLS ping, trace routes, and MRU. You can visit the website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.